Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Prusa Mendel Iteration 2. In the last video, we went over the calibration for the bed height, and now we're going to go through the calibration for the stepper motors. First, before we do that, let's um, put some oil on all of our smooth rods and the Z-screws here. So I'm just going to use a bit of gun oil here, and I'm going to put one drop on each smooth rod on, for the x-axis, and I'm going to move the x-axis over and then put a drop on the on each smooth rod on the other side and I'm going to move the x-axis back and forth and make sure that the oil gets on the rods there. And later I'll also take a cloth and I'll make sure that it gets uh, uh, I get on all the metal parts. Next I'm going to put a drop on the y-axis on each smooth rod on each side and then just move it back and forth. So that'll be good for now for, for the testing we're going to be doing here. And then also put a drop on the smooth rod for the uh, Z-axis on top of both bearings there and then also on the Z-screw on both sides. All right, that'll be good for now. Okay, now what we need to do is uh, to start off with, we're gonna work on the Z axis. So I'm gonna measure the distance between the top plastic part here of the XN motor mount to the bottom of the Z N motor mount. Now that, I believe that was uh, 160, um, or 65 millimeters before? Let's see. Oh, 136, that's right. Okay, so I'm just gonna double check it here. And then I'm going to um, zero out the caliper. I'm gonna make sure this is straight up and down. And zero the caliper. You can see that uh, the caliper is zeroed out now. Oh, I moved it just a little bit, but Anyway, now I'm going to go to the software and I'm going to move the Z axis up 50 millimeters. So that'll be in 10 millimeter increments. So I'm going to need to click it four more times. So that's one, two, Three, four, five. Okay, now with my caliper zeroed out, this measurement is going to be the actual distance that it moved. So let's see here. And I'm coming up with um, 49.92. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, so that's pretty close, but uh, we're going to we're going to adjust the settings in the um, firmware software to make it more accurate. Next, we're going to do the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and first move that home. Okay, and then I'm going to measure the distance between between the end of the x-axis here, or the x uh, end motor mount, and the plastic part of the carriage here. I'm going to measure the distance and zero out my caliper.
Okay, and now I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move the X carriage um, 100 millimeters. Okay, and now uh, the distance should be the actual distance traveled. Uh, which comes out at 85.34. So that's quite a bit different from, from the stock settings there. Okay, next I'm going to do the y-axis. So I'm going to bring that forward and then I'm going to measure the distance between the uh, bar clamp here and the MDF bed. I'm going to measure that distance. Okay, it won't fit, so I'm just going to use the um, the glass instead. Okay, got that zeroed out. Then I'm going to go ahead and move that. Um, let's see if I can do 100 millimeters. Okay, I just moved to one because I couldn't remember which way was which. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I'm going to, this should be the actual distance it moved now. Which is 84.94. Okay. Um, now, next I'm going to measure the um, extruder. So let me go ahead and bring that down a little bit. Now the extruder is kind of funny um, and I'm not going to be able to do a huge calibration on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run some filament down here. Oops. By I'm going to activate the extruder while I apply pressure here. Okay, that's not going to work. So, I'm going to have to pull that back. Okay, there we go. All right. Now for this, I'm going to um, extrude it a little bit ways further here, a little ways further, in five millimeter increments. Okay, I don't want to put it too far down because the hot end isn't hot, so it's just going to jam up. So I've only I've only extruded uh, ten millimeters worth, which means ten millimeters of the filament is is inside here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to mark the bottom right right at the top of the extruder. I'm going to tape the tape right to the top of where where it is at the extruder and then I'm going to reverse it 10 millimeters. Oh Okay, and then I'm going to measure that distance. So I'm going to close my caliper and zero it out, and then I'm going to measure how long, how much uh, of the filament got extruded here, which it's kind of tricky to measure, but you know what? It's close enough. It's just about 10 millimeters, so I'm not going to worry about that. That turned out great. I'm really surprised. Okay, might as well go ahead and move it back down 10 millimeters. Because we'll be using that later. Alright, 
So now that I have my measurements, it's time to go to the computer. Okay. Okay, now we're back at the computer. I'm going to go ahead and mis minimize Pronter Face. And we need to open up the Arduino software. Okay, and then um, you may need to click on File, Open, and Browse to the Sprinter firmware and open it up, or it might open up automatically for you. Okay, and then we're going to click on the Configuration H file, and we need to scroll down to the axis step per unit um, values, and we need to adjust these to, um, to uh, compensate for the actual movements. So let me go ahead and open up the calculator. Now the first value here is for the x-axis, the second is for the y-axis, and uh, the third here is for the z-axis, and then the last one is for the e-axis, so these are se comma separated here. Uh, we're not going to touch the e-axis for uh, the extruder, because when I measured it, I told it to move 10 millimeters, and it pretty much moved 10 millimeters. I can't get an accurate measurement on it, but um, it was definitely close enough not to worry about it. If I do have any problems with extrusion, I can always adjust it in the slicer program. So let's go ahead and start with the x-axis since it's the first value here. Now, um, it actually, I told it to move 100 millimeters and it actually moved 85.34. So that tells me that this value here is too low. I need to compensate for that, for that difference. So to do that, I'm gonna take 80, which was the calibration value, and I'm going to divide it by 85.34 which was the actual movement so um, then you can multiply that by 100 and it comes out at 93.74 so we can put in 93.74 here ninety three point seven four and that will uh, compensate for for the uh, for the variance there, okay. And then um, the next value was 80 for the y-axis. The actual measurement was 84.94 times 100. So we need to adjust that to 94.18. And I'm going to do 184 because um, that third value is pretty high. So, okay. And then the uh, Z axis actually moved 49.92, so it's really, really close. I'm going to go ahead and take this value, 3200, and divide it by 1.25. Comes out to 2560. So let me go ahead and change that real quick to 2560. You could put calculations in there or actual values, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take 2560 and I'm going to divide it by 49.92 and I'm going to multiply by 50 which is what I wanted it to move and so it comes out just a little bit higher 2564.1 okay so um, I'm going to go ahead and save this and um, at this point you could uh, either burn this to your ramps or you can go ahead and burn it to uh, your printer board or other electronics depending on what kind of motherboard you have and um, you can go ahead and, and re redo the calibration again and you can do this a couple of times until you get it just right. In this case I'm just going to go ahead and um, um, leave it at that. Now we did cover this step in a previous video so um, I'm sure that uh, you do know how to do that. So that's it. Thanks for watching.